U.S. Soccer has announced a non-interim but also interim head coach for the friendly game in Portugal in November. So if you're like me, you're kind of going, what? What is happening here? So if you're unaware, Dave Sarakin has been named the the continuing head coach or like the, the guy for the friendly head coach. He's not an interim. He's not getting the interim tag. It's not like the full-fledged, hey, man, you're the interim and good luck. It's more of a, oh, we've uh, we got a game in November. Uh, who wants it? And he was kind of like, I guess I'll do it, which seems like a really poor idea. So let's unpack this a little bit. The U.S. is playing Portugal in November as part of a World Cup warm-up, you know, like play some good teams, whatever. It was supposed to be, I'm, I'm sure, us warming up for the World Cup. And, and and then, you know, Trinidad Tobago happened, which we've been talking about in this series, obviously. And so now we're the cannon fodder for Ronaldo. Yay! That's so good. But Dave Sarakin is, or was the like assistant head coach to Bruce Arena. And Bruce hired him because he was his assistant ke- head coach at the LA Galaxy for eight years before he, right, then he came to the U.S. national team and here comes Dave, right? Seems to be a, a perfectly adequate coach. You know, he was with the Chicago Fire for a bit, yada, yada, yada. But what I'm super concerned about with this move is it it, to me, it says one thing and one thing only. And that is the U.S. Soccer Federation was completely unprepared to not qualify for the World Cup. Now, I'm not saying like you need to go in going like, well, we're not qualifying. What are we going to do next? Like, I'm not saying that's what you need to do. But if you're going into the final weekend or week or whatever, the last two game days or match days or whatever, of World Cup qualifying in the hex, and you're still not guaranteed to be in, you kind of have to start going like, man, what do we do? Like, what if? What if? What if? If you're actually thinking ahead in your brain as like the president and the CEO of U.S. Soccer, those people should have been going, what do we do if this happens? What do we do if that happens? And one of those scenarios has to be, what if you don't qualify? Because you weren't guaranteed to get in. And then, of course, we didn't get in. So here's why I think it's an indicator that we were just not anticipating not making it. Because it's like a, it's not a hire, right? It, you could say, some people have said, you know, well, they didn't want to go spend money on somebody or or whatever. We're sitting on $100 million. Like, what's it got to be? $200 million before you go, you go hire a coach? So I don't, I, I completely dismiss that. I have no, like, no belief that that is the reason we haven't gone on and hired somebody. I think it's because we didn't expect to be in this situation. We hadn't made any phone calls. Like, it was just a couple weeks ago, right, that the U.S. failed to qualify versus Trinidad and Tobago. So, they they haven't, it's not like they had done months and months of, well, if we don't make it, Bruce is out, do you want to be the guy, you know, whatever. Like, they, they obviously hadn't had those conversations, you could argue that we're waiting until after the World Cup to hire the full-time coach. And that I can actually get behind. I can believe that. But that doesn't tell you why we haven't hired an interim coach now. The other thing you kind of have to be worried about is a lot of people have said Tab Ramos, who's the U-20 coach, has been like the like odds-on favorite to take over as the interim coach. The fact that that didn't happen relatively quickly leads me to believe one of two things is happening is Tab is either negotiating really hard financially or Tab wants to be the full-time coach. And I think that's where U.S. Soccer, like they announced, I believe Sunil said like we we're planning on coming out with a plan or whatever, like shortly, like within a week of the, the loss at Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and then it kind of didn't happen. So that to me says behind the scenes, there's a lot of people going like, oh my gosh, like we didn't make it. Now what? Hey, Tab, you want the gig? Just interim though. Could you help us out? And he's like, no, man, I want to be the, I'm going to be the full, full head time coach. 
And they're like, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure about that. And he's like, well, screw you. <laughs> like, it's kind of what I, I get the feeling. If, if that was the route they wanted to go, you, you would think it'd be a slam dunk to get your U20 coach to come be the interim coach. So that has me nervous because I think it all leads back to U.S. Soccer had zero thought put into what happens if we don't make the World Cup. Um, right. Here's the other part that is like super concerning to me. I think personally, time is of the essence. Like you only have so many friendly matches, you know, qualifying matches, Gold Cup matches, or whatever to build towards World Cup 2022. Like it's not like there's a thousand games between now and then. So I, even though it is only a friendly against Portugal in November and it's really soon after you getting punched in the face. I feel like that is your first opportunity to go out and start making changes. And especially considering the fact that you don't have two games in that window because we were supposed to play Wales, but they didn't qualify for the world cup. So they backed out or we backed out. Or I'm sure it was some contractual agreements like, well, if neither of us make the World Cup. Let's kind of nix this thing, right? Um, so we haven't been able to pick up a second friendly match in the November window. Well, that to me is significant. So that means this one match is super important. To me, it's where you tell the old guard, see you later, guys. It's been fun having you. Now's not the time. And I know it's against Portugal or whatever. You don't go into that game expecting to win. You don't go into that game right now expecting to win. Like if you send your senior team, you're not expecting to win that game. So why not call up some U20s? Some of those guys on the fringe that didn't get the last call up. Maybe bring in some U17 guys like Josh, Josh Sargent and uh, Andrew Carlton and Timothy Weah. I'm not saying they need to start. But why not start integrating them into the system, get them a cap at the senior level? And I could be wrong, but I just don't think that's going to happen when you have the guy that was the associate head coach for the last guy. It really reeks to me of like more of the same. And that above all, like even if he's the interim or not the interim or whatever, that above all is what is most concerning about this appointment of this guy. Um, and I have nothing against him. I'm sure he's a perfectly fine coach. He's just part of the old regime who didn't get it done. So why keep him? I don't understand that part. Um, so I I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Are you concerned about the non-interim interim replacement as much as I am? Because I'm concerned about the fact that it shows that we weren't thinking ahead, the fact that we weren't ready, the fact that he's part of the the, the, the coaching staff that just failed, and that to me indicates there'll be little changes heading into that friendly match when there should be widespread changes to start getting those young guys caps to get them ready for five years from now. So smash a like on this, subscribe if you're new, make sure you share it. You guys have been awesome about sharing. Like We've had so many people come visit the, uh, the channel because of people sharing and commenting and throwing on Facebook and stuff like that. So make sure you leave a comment too. I'd love your thoughts. We'll see you in the next episode. We are going to fix you a soccer. I promise we're, we're working on it and I'm big. Sorry if I'm big. I thought I'd try it. Let's see how you like it. Also, I meant to mention, I've been a little absent in the comments, which you guys have been blowing up the comments. I took a mini, like four day mini vacation away from YouTube, away from my house, unplugged my, my iPhone, uh, took my work email off, like took a bunch of stuff off. So that's kind of why there was a bit of a, uh, a gap in content where things kind of slowed down, but I'm back and we're going to be hopping right back into this series with U.S. Soccer. If you happen to like Football Manager, FM18, the beta is going to drop on Friday. I'll be uh, doing a new save on that that I'll reveal on Friday and heading, heading into this weekend. So make sure you stick around for those things. I wanted to make sure you knew what was going on. So again, thanks. Bye.